Hello boys and girls, this has been a hell of a month for my game. I've been fixing bugs, adding features and most importantly I've released the first public build of my game on Steam. In case you're unaware, this was part of the Steam Next Fest which ran from the 3rd to the 10th of October. During this time, like I said, I released a demo on the first day which you can still go and play now and on the 8th, which was the Saturday, I did a live stream which had an average of about 2 viewers so that's 2 more than I thought I was going to get. Anyway, this is version 0.14 and it has been a long time in the making. This version is mostly an amalgamation of things that I always wanted to do but just never got around to. The first thing I'll talk about are some new random structures that you can find in the world. This idea was first proposed to me by the guy making music and these structures are old abandoned farmhouses. So the story behind these structures is that while the island of Sunder Mead is empty now, it wasn't always that way. When the Romans invaded Britannia, they took Sundermead too and started to build a settlement here. But after Rome collapsed, these buildings were left abandoned and to decay. A hundred or so years later, you arrive on the island and you find these structures scattered around with possessions left behind by their previous inhabitants. Anyway, enough of the story. How did I achieve this? Well, luckily, due to my already existing building mechanic, I had lots of different building parts that I could use to generate these houses. My building system uses a 3x3 grid which lets me snap together these pieces nice and easily. I started off by experimenting with different building sizes to see if what I had planned was even feasible. Initially, I wanted to be able to make small houses all the way up to these great big halls, and I built the generator with that in mind. Once the floors were generated how I wanted them to be, I started to add walls. This was a bit more complicated just due to the nature of having these corner pieces that I'd have to put together and then having to fill in the gaps between all of those as well. When these walls are generated, I just have a list of different wall types, so that's plain wall, window and door. And when it plops down a wall, it will just pick a random one of these, so a building can have as many doors as you want really. This allows me to easily create doorways and break up the monotony of these endless walls. <laughs> It was when I got to adding roofs that I realised that creating these great big halls that I wanted wasn't really feasible, and this is because the roofs in my game also fit that 3x3 grid. This meant that if I wanted a building more than two blocks wide, there would be a great big hole in the ceiling. I could get around this by adding multiple storeys to these buildings, but I didn't want multi-storey houses. So the final result ended up being houses with a max width of two and a max length of four, and then anything random in between. And I'm quite happy with it. The next thing I wanted to do was fill these structures with anything. When Fraud mentioned his idea for these structures, he also mentioned the idea of having breakable pottery that would drop random items. So I messaged my friend who had previously made some models for me and asked him to make some Rome-inspired pottery. I then broke those apart in Blender and made a simple random item dropper and voila, we have this now. The next major change I made was to the fishing. Previously when you were fishing, your fishing rod was very static and to me it really took away from the experience of being there fishing on the island. I noticed that in other games like Red Dead Redemption 2 and Sea of Thieves that the fishing rod would bend and twist and stretch as you pulled it around and the fish tried to fight back against you. I decided that the best way to achieve this would be to rig up my existing fishing rod model and create four poses, one for it bending all the way forward, back, left and right. From there I can calculate the fish's position relative to the fishing rod and use that value to blend between each of those animations. The final piece of the puzzle was to add a little rope stretching sound effect whose volume I can control based upon how bent the fishing rod is. And this is what I end up with. It adds a lot more life to the mechanic in my opinion. One fairly trivial yet quite impactful thing I added this time around was to add a rainbow the day after it finishes raining. I say it was trivial but that's just because Unity Shader Graph made it quite easy to implement. One quite interesting thing I did with it though is to have the rainbow fade out based upon where in the sky the sun is. I did this using the standard Lambertian lighting formula which is N dot L. N being the direction of the normal, L being the inverse direction of the light. 
The dot product of those then determines whether a surface is facing away or towards a light source and then from there you can figure out should it be lit or not. Well the same principle applies here because a rainbow should only be visible when the viewer is between it and the sun. This means that as the sun goes overhead and further behind the rainbow it will no longer be visible to say me who it was visible to this morning. So by making the rainbow plane always face towards the player I can calculate should it be lit or visible or should it not be well I think that's enough of me talking to you lot for now I got another video coming out in a couple of weeks in which I talk about how I stole some techniques from Naughty Dog to improve my sky and fog and make it a hell of a lot better and a few other things but um, if you're interested then give the subscribe button a little kiss and stick around and that should hopefully show up in your notifications in a couple of weeks time I've also got a discord so if you want to come talk about the game or view more granular updates then that's there I'll leave a link in the description and I've also got a steam page so if you like the look of my game then give it a little wish list anyway thank you very much for your time and I hope to see you in a couple of weeks